the semester, chapter 31. And this is on nuclear energy. And effects of radiation. All right, <clears throat> so in chapter 30, we talked about radioactivity. Approximately 4 billion years and carbon 14, which is a half life of approximately 5,760 years, and we can use these as baby clay rocks or living things one time. In this chapter, we're going to be dealing with the concept of fission and fusion. All right, so I'll deal with fission first because that's this is. This is what goes on in the sun, and this is what goes on in an atomic bomb, or a nuclear reactor. Okay. <clears throat> now, what, what are we going to do? Fission and fusion. All right, we go back to our graph of bind, so-called binding energy, so binding energy of chapter 30, and we have hydrogen down here, and uranium too, and it goes up like this kind of graph, <coughs> and we have iron 26 in the middle. And now everything in here can be can undergo radioactivity. Anything from here down to here, because we have carbon is way down here, that's radioactive. You have even hydrogen, what they call tritium, is radioactive. I mean, hydrogen is normally one proton and no neutrons, but what we, if we have one and three, so one proton plus one is a neutron. This is called tritium. This is actually radioactive. So this is radioactive. One proton plus two neutrons. All right, and then one H2 is called deuterium. Well, these are radioactive. Now, what we find in the other case here is everything on this side can undergo fission and everything on this side can undergo fusion. Meaning, fission is splitting at, oh, atoms. Fusion is combining uh, nuclei. So fusion, they make bigger and bigger ones until the maximum is 126. <coughs> fission, on their hand, they break down into smaller ones. Now with radioactivity again, uranium-238, uh, 92 breaks down to thorium-234, 90, and we have the other elements plus an alpha particle. And again, it takes about 4 billion years. <coughs> now it was discovered that Not so much with uranium-238, which is about 99% of all uranium is 238. About 1% or less is what we call uranium-235. And this becomes famous because this is what they, this is thing what they'll call undergo, they call fission, readily fission. So, what we have here is we start with, yeah, this has a half life of four and a half billion years. If we take uranium 235 
and shoot it with a neutron. So we add a neutron, so we hit a, so we have a nucleus and we shoot a neutron at it. That neutron, because it has no charge to it, will penetrate into the nucleus and it hits it just right. What will actually happen, it will break down instantly, instantly, more or less. Not four billion years, but almost instantly into much smaller particles, barium-141 and 56 plus krypton-3692. Plus, more importantly, three neutrons. So we hit, so I'll come out from this side. We hit one neutron at it. It breaks down into these two, barium and krypton, which are not important. But it also emits three neutrons. And it happens almost since like a billionth of a second. If these neutrons hit more uranium-235, those will also break down. And then those will emit three neutrons. And it goes, you know, three, nine, 27. It just starts exponential growth. So you end up with this exponential growth of number of neutron of uranium that are detected. This is, this is the basis of the atomic bomb, is having this occur. So fission occurs almost instantly and produces three neutrons. Uh, this was discovered in 1938 by Lisa Meitner. And it was shown that almost instantly in 1939 that you can make a bomb from this. And so this became well aware, and again, this is right when World War II started. So this is the concept. So this is fission. Now, fortunately, if you do the lab, when you look at lab 13 with this, right, most uranium is 238, 99% or more, less than 1% is uranium-235. This does not fizz very well or undergo fission very well. It's very complicated, doesn't work. And so if you're actually doing a real experiment, if you're actually trying to do it, you know, do fission, what you have to do is separate this from that. And it's extremely complicated because they're chemically identical. And we talked about this before. Um, you can separate it by magnetic means, chemical. This is the whole basis of the Manhattan Project. Which led to the development in 1942 to 45, which led to development of the atomic bomb. And the vast majority of the money was either producing, <coughs> separating U-235 from U-238. Because to make a bomb, you need about 80% U-235. All right, so it's extremely difficult to do that. So for a bomb, you need that. And that's the whole thing. That's why, like Iran, North Korea, I mean, the difficulty is trying to separate this from that because they're almost exactly the same thing. Um, for a reactor, is about 4%. Because the way it works, as far as this concept, 
is you have to have what they call critical mass. All right? And for uranium, I'm not going to get into details. Uranium, so for U-235, it's several kilograms, right? Because if it's too small, then a neutron that comes out, it emits three, and the particles are way spread out, so it's not very dense. They'll just miss. They'll just go flying by because there's not enough. However, if you have enough of them together, so if you have a little, a lot, right? It's very small amount, it's liable to miss. But if you have a lot of mass, then one uranium in the middle, when they miss three neutrons, it's more than likely it's going to hit another one. So this so-called critical mass, so it has to be large enough for that to occur. And again, that was the basis of the Manhattan Project, led by Dr. Robert Oppenheimer. That was done in Los Alamos, New Mexico in the 1940s, in the process of other facilities, um, were to separate the U-235 from the less, from the basically non fissionable U-238. So that is fission, and it's used um, for a nuclear reactor, so it creates energy, uh, gets hot, and it's used to drive generators. So um, that's the principle of a bomb of about 80% or a nuclear reactor about 4%. So that's fission. Uh, you can look into there. Now, back to, so that's the process of fission and it occurs in about a billionth of a second or more or less instantly. If we have, on the other hand, all right, uh, the process of what goes on in the sun, this is fusion. And roughly what it means is we combine hydrogen plus hydrogen plus hydrogen plus hydrogen, you know, basically combine hydrogen together four hydrogens together. So four hydrogens could together um, make one helium nucleus plus some other particles plus energy. Because what we see is the mass of four One, all right, call atomic mass units. So if you have four of those, that's 4.032 atomic mass units, which is not important. So this is basically to find out what's the size. And one helium nucleus has a mass of 4.032. Zero, zero, two, six. If we subtract the two, the difference is point zero, two, point zero, two, nine atomic mass units. And so when these four hydrogen combine to make helium, this helium molecule helium nucleus weighs four than the original, and based on Einstein's theory of relativity, E equals mc squared, where this is C is nine three times 10 to the eighth hmm. What you end up with is, if we have 
one kilogram of material, of energy, one kilogram mass as one times three is nine times 10 to the 16th, one kilogram converts to nine times 10 to the 16th joules. So based on this, the extra mass becomes energy, which is what drives the sun. So this is fusion. So you have hydrogen combines to make helium, and then in the center it keeps going on. You can have so in the sun this eventually becomes uh, carbon, which becomes oxygen as it combines more and more, and the end product is uranium. If we look again on this mining energy chart, as we had in the book, right? It peaks at iron, iron 26. Now in the sun, we have hydrogen combining in the center and eventually works its way out and we see it in radiation. As the sun runs out of energy and for the sun, the sun will last about five billion more years. So the process is going to last a long time. It becomes helium, which becomes carbon, oxygen, night, you know, so on, nitrogen, so on. And it'll keep fusing until it becomes iron in the center for a large star. Okay, not just any star. The sun won't be do that. This is more of getting into astrophysics, but the sun's not big enough. For a large star, once it becomes iron in the center, then it explodes into a supernova. So for a large star, the last process is iron. Iron cannot fuse anymore because it's not that binding energy. It takes actually more energy to combine it than it gets out of it. So from things less than, so again, on this chart, everything less than iron can undergo fusion, and everything greater than that can undergo fission. And that's the process of, so fusion combines energy, combines elements together, or atoms together, nuclei together, I should say. Uh, the product is less than the, less than the sum of the sum, and you end up with the extra becomes energy, and that's what drives the sun, All right? So, so that is um, that, you know, eventually look about doing fusion reactors. Um, that's the whole basis of fusion. It's combining hydrogen to make helium and energy. So if that can ever work, that would be really great. So that's the part there. Okay. All right. For the last part here, I'm not going to get into the unit, but um, all right. So biological effects. Last part of the chapter here. And you can pull this up yourself, but there's different units, um, effective. So biological biological effects. All right, so in the different units, uh, we have um, the sievert, SV, we have the rem, and one rem, sievert is 100 rem. And so these are the basic biological units of radiation. Now, one dangerous thing here, as we talked about a little bit, is on radon. 
86-222, and this is an alpha particle. This emits an alpha particle, which is again a helium nucleus. Right? Now radon is dangerous because it's emit, you know, there's radi uranium ever, everywhere to some degree. It gets decayed, as we talked about chapter 30. Um, and then radon, which is an inert gas, will get into particularly basements if it's not ventilated, and that will decay into, you ingest it, or, or inhale it, I should say, and then this is very dangerous, alpha particle, so the skin blocks well, but internally dangerous. So let's look at these things. Okay, we have the alpha particle, which is the helium nucleus. We had the beta particle, which is an electron. And we have the gamma ray, which is a high energy, which is a photon. Now, a helium nucleus, paper, or skin, blocks this well. So it doesn't penetrate, because it's helium, it just doesn't block, it blocks it so it doesn't penetrate. Um, an electron, on the other hand, takes, you know, um, is harder to penetrate, so paper, skin, so it's harder to penetrate, but it's it's much, it can definitely penetrate paper, but you get thicker things like thin lead, that'll stop beta particles. A gamma ray uh, takes thick lead because it's a photon, much like it's like an X-ray, but even more energetic. So gamma ray, which are very dangerous, which are parts of, when, it, when you have an atomic bomb and fallout, there's a lot of particles there can emit gamma radiation. So it, it can go on for a while, which can be quite dangerous. So thick lead will eventually block this. So the order of dangerous is, so alpha particles, so anything like radon is harmless in terms if it stays outside the body. Once it gets inside, your protections are very bad. Polonium is another example, right? There was a scientist, a Russian person that was poisoned by, they gave polonium. Once you get polonium into your body, it's highly radioactive, much like plutonium, and that's ra alpha radiation, highly dangerous. So the least dangerous outside the body is alpha particles, um, alpha radiation, Beta takes a little bit harder. And you can see this when we do lab 13, as far as what type of materials block it, as far as that's concerned. So that's a little bit into that. I'm not gonna get into any more as far as uh, radiation, radiation therapy, magnetic resonance. So you ought to read that, but that's not gonna be part of the chapter.